Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Property Management 101. And for today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five metrics that every maintenance supervisor should be tracking. This video will apply best to anyone that's in charge of maintenance at your properties or your portfolios. And regardless of the side of the industry you work in, whether it be single family homes, whether it be multifamily, regardless if it's student or conventional, these practices will apply regardless of the demographic or asset type. I'm gonna be discussing five metrics with you today that I would recommend every maintenance supervisor is aware of and is working on but there are gonna be a lot of other metrics that may be important to your company and you as the supervisor as the maintenance supervisor of that particular property. Also keep in mind every company may have a slightly different title for maintenance supervisors. Maybe it's maintenance director, maybe it's regional maintenance director, there could be area maintenance director. So regardless of the title or the company that you work for, and these are five metrics that I'm gonna be sharing with you that everyone that's in charge of maintenance should be aware of and should be tracking. Number one, work order turnaround time. What is your average turnaround time for all of your work orders that are completed at your property? Is that number within the expectations that your company has for that particular metric? Is this a number that could be improved upon at all? Maybe it's a situation where it is within that company's expectations, it is within a reasonable time frame, but maybe it's still a metric that you believe that could be improved on by maybe a day or two. You also wanna be aware of what reports in your software that your company uses at that particular property actually tracks this number. So you and others can easily pull that number and then you're all working off the same metric as far as how that's collected. Another thing that's gonna be really important for you to determine as the maintenance supervisor is how this information is collected and how it's compiled. For example, if someone submits a work order and that work order is completed same day. So maybe for example, it's submitted at 10 a.m., but that work order is actually closed out and completed at two o'clock. Will your software recognize that as one or recognize that as zero? This is important to know as you're tracking this metric as far as how is that combined and how is that number that's provided as the metric is put together. The second metric that you should be tracking as a maintenance supervisor is the number of available units. Now, depending on your software and depending on your company, this could be a situation where you may want to break this up into two separate metrics. So for a lot of softwares out there, all the ones I've actually personally worked with, one of the things when you pull up a report that's listing available units, it's gonna look at any available unit that's available to rent. So this includes all notice units and includes all vacant units. So knowing the number of available units will be really important for you as a maintenance supervisor. This will help you determine what units that you can perform make readies on and then you have upcoming to perform make readies on. For any vacant units, have we walked these units for damages and have we walked these units to determine what supplies we'll need and or what vendors will need to turn this unit into make ready condition. Once we've walked the unit to determine some of those things, have we provided the office and the leasing team an expected make ready date for this particular unit? You don't wanna necessarily just go off what you default or what your average is. Some units can take longer, some units can take shorter, and you wanna give the office the best expectation that they have where you could have a potential move in. As this unit's being worked on and there's things being done in the unit, is there any point during the process that you need to update the office as far as if that make ready date has changed? Maybe you have to move it up or it's gonna be available and done earlier than expected, or maybe you have to move it back as this may be a situation that's taking longer than you expected. So it's really important that you're managing your vacant units within your available units as a maintenance supervisor. Also keep in mind, you wanna make sure you're managing your notice units. So these are gonna be units that are on notice, scheduled to move out in the near future, but not yet necessarily vacant. As a maintenance team, is your staff ready for this move out? Have we allotted time to walk the unit? Have we allotted time to turn the unit once it is vacant? Do we need to order any particular supplies for this given unit? Maybe for example, this floor plan has a particular air filter size that's needed. And do we have enough of that air filter size so once the unit becomes vacant, we're able to quickly turn that unit or is a situation we may need to order certain supplies because we're out or we're low in stock of those particular items. Are any of these notice units that you know for certain that will require vendors to do and perform some of the work that's needed in those units. 
Maybe it's a unit that's receiving an upgrade. Maybe it's a unit that you know of personally that, hey, we're gonna have to provide a full paint in this unit. So there could be situations where you know for certain that you will require a outside vendor. And if that's the case, have we scheduled that outside vendor? Have we given that vendor a heads up that, hey, we're gonna have a three bedroom coming online and this is what it's gonna need. If not, you really wanna do this before the unit becomes vacant so you can give that vendor plenty of notice and you can get on their schedule. Also keep in mind, if your company performs or requires as a staff, you perform pre-move out inspection, providing the tenant with some tips and tricks of things you see that they could address before they move out, and also as a staff, collect some information of what that unit may need. This is something you're gonna to wanna to schedule and perform before that unit becomes available as well. If you're enjoying this video and you're learning something new, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for future videos. And the third metric that you wanna track as a maintenance supervisor is make ready turnaround time. Now this metric is gonna be very similar to the past metric that I just spoke about. That one is knowing the number of units that are on notice and that are vacant and what stage is your team in when it comes to the progress of those. This one is more about what's the typical turnaround time and knowing that information when it comes to making a unit ready for a potential move-in. Once you've determined what that average turnaround time is for any unit that needs to be made ready, these are some of the things I would be asking yourself to ensure that you're constantly in position to improve and maintain this strong number. Number one, is this a situation where that number is within the company standard? Number two, is it a situation you think you can improve this number even by a day or two? Number three, what report in your software actually tracks this information? Number four, how's this information put together? Does it count the day the unit was put vacant in the system? Or does it count the very next day as that is the first full day? Does it count business days? Does it count weekends? How is this information compiled and put together when it determines what your average turnaround time of a make ready is? Knowing how your software tracks this information and knowing what reports that pull and collect and track this information in your software will be really important for you as a supervisor so you can truly compare apples to apples. The fourth metric that you're going to want to track as a maintenance supervisor is your labor. How you manage your team's hours will be super important to ensure that you're consistently able to stay within your budget. If you have staff that is consistently hitting overtime, why? Is this something to be offset by a different line item? What if your staff have scheduled PTO coming up? Do we have proper coverage during that time? Do we have a situation where maybe there's overlapping PTOs that are scheduled? Have we scheduled for that? Maybe during this time we want to allot for a little bit more vendor usage or maybe a little bit more overtime. Has that been considered? Do you have any staff that you know that they voice to you that, hey, I'm gonna be taking some PTO in the future, but that's not yet submitted? Do you have any staff that's maybe close to hitting their PTO for the year? Just touching base with them to let them know that they're close to hitting their limit in their PTO. Or on the other end of the spectrum where you have a staff member that may not have taken any PTO yet or scheduled any PTO. So these are some things that are really important to check in with your staff's PTO as well. Another thing when it comes to your labor costs is you want to determine and review your timesheets on a consistent basis. Do you have any staff members that are consistently late? Do you have any staff members that are consistently leaving early? Do you have any staff members that are not consistently working their full scheduled time? So for example, this could impact you, their benefits from a negative aspect. So this is why it's really important that you wanna make sure they're eligible for their benefits, but you also wanna make sure that they're scheduling and working and starting and ending at the time that is scheduled to, so everyone's on the same page when it comes to that expectation. And the fifth metric that you wanna track as a maintenance supervisor is vendor expense. Knowing your vendor's expenses each month will be super important for you to ensure that you're always staying within your budget. If it is a situation that you're closely monitoring your vendor expense and it is a situation you're on track or maybe already over that month when it comes to what was allotted in your budget for vendor expense, then you will at least have time to help offset that extra expense in your vendor costs with something else potentially. If this is something you're not monitoring, you're not gonna have that opportunity to help offset this additional expense. If it is something that can't be avoided as well, this is where you really wanna make sure you collect your facts so that as your property manager or as your regional or as maybe ownership ask questions about this, you can provide those answers very quickly. Another aspect that you wanna review when it comes to your vendor expense is your vendors charging you what you agreed upon before they started working on that particular job at your property. You wanna make sure they're not overcharging you for anything that's agreed upon. You wanna make sure you've collected all invoices for any work that's been done. So this is gonna be important as well when you're monitoring and managing that vendor expense. 
This also helps you allow to catch missing invoices. Too often I've seen where maybe we get a last minute invoice for something we knew that the work was done, but we didn't receive the invoice. And this is gonna be an important dynamic as well is that we're collecting invoices for any work that's being done so we can accurately forecast where we're at and where we're gonna be at from a budget perspective. If you have a vendor that you know has outstanding work, maybe you budget for it every month, maybe it's a landscaping company and you haven't received the invoice yet and you see that maybe you're $5,000 under and you, you budget $5,000 a month from a landscaping expense, you should be able to easily catch this and address that with the landscaper. Hey, I've not received your invoice, the work has not been done. And this is another great way to make sure that any work that's needed to be done is done by monitoring your vendor expenses. And for a video recap today, keep in mind these five metrics as a maintenance supervisor to ensure your position, your asset or portfolio in the best position possible. Number one, you really wanna make sure you're aware of the work order turnaround time. This is gonna be important for your teams to constantly keep that number low, keep resident satisfaction high. Number two, you wanna make sure you're monitoring the number of available units. This will give your team and yourself a good idea of what needs to be turned and what's gonna be needed to be turned in the near future. The next metric that you wanna make sure you're always monitoring is make ready turnaround time. What's the average days that it takes for your team to turn a unit? Is it within company standards? Is it not? Is it a number you can improve? So these are the questions you wanna make sure that you're aware of when it comes to this particular metric. The fourth metric you should be tracking as a maintenance supervisor is your labor. Have you monitored and managed your employees' timesheets? Have you monitored and managed your PTO request? Have you monitored and managed your overtime for your staff? This is gonna be an important dynamic as well that you have a good grip on when it comes to this particular metric. And last but not least, vendor expense. So this will allow you to know if you are missing invoices, if you have missing work that needs to be done. Monitoring your vendor expenses is gonna be really important for you as a maintenance supervisor to ensure you're staying within budget. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for future videos. Before putting any of these practices into place, please watch our updated disclosure video as well as our updated why we do this video, which is the channel's why. And I'll be providing a link to both of those in the video description. And to stay on top of industry news, polls, and video releases, please feel free to connect with our LinkedIn and our Instagram page. If you have any questions about this video or any of our videos, feel free to leave a comment. I'll be happy to address it for you. Happy leasing.